Ich würde fast mit der Λοιπόν, αυτά θα Ωραία, Λοιπόν, ε, καλωσορίζω όλους ο, τους παρευρισκόμενους και εδώ και εξ αποστάσεως στο πρώτο σεμινάριο της καινούργιας χρονιάς. Ε, ωραία, τώρα αυτή τη στιγμή συμβαίνει να είμαστε όλοι Έλληνες εδώ πέρα. Γενικά η ομιλία είναι στα αγγλικά, Τάσο. Yeah. Ε, οπότε αν θέλεις, yeah. ξέρεις, αν μπορεί να την κάνεις κάτι στα αγγλικά, γιατί με, μπαίνουν μετά και την βλέπουμε αρκετέ φορέ. Όπω θέλει. Ή ενδιάμεσα όπω σε βολεύει. Καλύτερα, αν, αν μπορεί στα αγγλικά, κάτι στα αγγλικά για να έχουμε, καλύψουμε την πιθανότητα να θέλει κάποιο ναι, ναι. να την παρακολουθήσει. Uh, there is no uh, reason to, for a special introduction. Uh, all of us uh, who are present and uh, those that uh, follow the seminar online know Tassos very, very well. Okay, so I, I, I don't do an introduction task. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shortest introduction. The shortest ever. ever. The short, uh, you, you're But, very yeah. well known, so please start. <laughs> Not many words are needed. Λοιπόν, κάνουμε τα τετραγωνάκια λίγο να στην πάντα. Μήνυμάς το πάρτε στο κοινό το τετραγωνάκι τελείως αριστερά. So I'm happy to inaugurate this new year of uh, seminars. Uh, it's a very uh, uh, happy occasion for me to be again here among friends I know for uh, decades, not simply years. And uh, we have... Uh, seen together when been together in several live uh, performances and live uh, uh, lectures and now we are entering the period of uh, live uh, uh, presentations again uh, after after the uh, period of uh, virtual uh, presentations so uh, and I, I find this much much more interesting than being online and following a lecture online uh, Now, what I decided to, to do today uh, what is to give you a presentation I, I gave very recently at a conference in Maribor, Slovenia, where there was, there was a celebration of the 80 years of Giulio Casati, the great physicist. Uh, there was a lot of other colleagues and friends there. So I, I had to wonder what to do, what to present uh, of results of uh, several years, you might say but that have a certain message that you one can take home message uh, and that can be encapsulated into a few words. And only after I came to a conclusion, I said, okay, I accept the invitation. I can give a lecture like this to, a, to an audience that, is, that consists of physicists and mathematicians, primarily physicists of various disciplines. And hopefully they will uh, appreciate the reason why Uh, this all this was done. So now, after being a, a professor emeritus from Patras University, which is on the left, after many years, to 2016, I started roaming the world, and I went to very nice university in Kazakhstan for several years, and then I made some uh, friends and collaborations in a very nice city in Russia called Yaroslavl, somewhere two, 300 kilometers from Moscow, and uh, I. Was, I'm part of a research program there, so I visit them from time to time. And I, they are very strong mathematicians in Russia, as you know very well. But um, they have to learn about a kind of physics and uh, mathematical physics that we do more in the West, which does not involve, unfortunately, a lot of analytical work, but it does uh, offer a lot of um, intuition, a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, interesting ideas 
which should be pursued further. Now, the uh, title of this talk is on long range interactions. And the other red words are Hamiltonian lattices. But the phrase in between says that long range interaction can do something in Hamiltonian lattices. So when you talk about this, then you ask yourself, why? Why do you do all this work? And what are you uh, finding interesting? And the enhancement of global stability, which you know sometimes of uh, uh, complex networks, for example, uh, you hear about the hubs and about how important uh, is the interaction with many, many other uh, neighbors of yours who, is, who are very, very far away. So now, what is the take home message of this lecture? The, home, the, the message is in unity, there is strength. And you see this everyday life. And I even told the audience in my work, I said, you guys who have been gathering together, uh, Marco Roblik uh, has invited us for so many years. This has enhanced the, our communication because it's long range. People come over, start collaborations and so on. And that makes for a very strong group of people who continue to work. Here, your uh, center is a, para, is a paradigm of that. That's right? other. Uh, Kortopoulos and Panos Patsis and so many others of the researchers today, by increasing your long range interactions with other laboratories around the world on different aspects of uh, <laughs> celestial mechanics and astronomy, then you see that that makes for a very strong community. <laughs> However, in, uh, in uh, physics and mathematics, you have to be very specific. And uh, the uh, idea is that uh, long range communications, as we said, can, can make a group more resilient. However, now to understand this, you must look at it from different aspects. Uh, and the aspects will be here to show that uh, nearest neighbor interactions, you with your nearest, are very different than long range interactions. And what is new that happens under these conditions? First of all, we will see that LRI, as we will call our new friend, LRI can reduce chaos, <clears throat> but chaos reduces uh, merely by long range interactions. It is reduced not only dynamically, as we will see, but also statistically from a different point of view. And there is another interpretation of strong and weak chaos that we find also in stickiness phenomena, for example, as we said, in the panels we will discuss this later, and uh, chaos that is uh, well, uh, spread everywhere. But what is the difference? The difference is what kind of interactions do you have? And everybody knew that from uh, Boltzmann. Boltzmann and Gibbs assumed exponential reform of interactions in space, hard spheres. And when the interactions are so short range, only your neighbors affect you, then we, en we end up with Boltzmann gives statistical mechanics and with results that lead us to the Gaussian uh, function as the, the one that optimizes Boltzmann Gibbs entropy. Now we know more about this. So I will uh, refer to this aspect, but also I will become more dynamical afterwards and concern, concern myself with uh, Lyapunov exponents, how they respond to the long range interactions uh, we will hear something about another phenomenon called discrete breathers in one dilatsis. You don't have to know many details about this. I'm trying to make this lecture as general as, as possible. But you will see what I mean by other phenomena. And then there is another one that I've been involved in the last few years. And that is called la in lattices which are forced on one end by a sinusoidal kind of uh, oscillation. So one can imagine this as the electromagnetic uh, uh, type of potential forcing or a mechanical forcing, as we will see in these uh, uh, flights. Now, I do have some time, Paros. Huh? Sure. Yeah, we, we, we don't finish in two, half an hour or something like this. Because I was okay. I just take uh, take my time a little. Yes, and and it's it's important that uh, uh, we have some time to to think about these things and not have slides pass by before you uh, in, a, in a fast way. Now, as I was telling you, we, we all learned in 
university, first year already in physics, that there is one uh, royal entropy that we all obey and respect. And that entropy is Boltzmann entropy, but we should forget, we should not forget that this uh, type of uh, uh, physics, physical physics is uh, important and can be proved, can be studied, and is established on systems with short range interactions. And then the probability that optimizes the entropy of Boltzmann Gibbs is the well known Gaussian. Now, but there are many physical important systems who depend on gravitation and uh, electromagnetic interactions, which actually fall like one over R. And their, their, uh, uh, their interactions extend over large distances, even in, 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 in the universe. How can we expect these phenomena to be governed by a theory that was meant for uh, a different type of uh, interactions, uh, uh, short-term interactions? So there has to be some uh, progress in this field. And so another type of entropy was proposed that depends on this Q, which is entropy. This is not yet thermodynamics, but it is at least thermostatistics. And it's telling us that we can optimize now this uh, type of chaos, because uh, we're going to talk about chaos, by a different kind of distribution, which has a parameter q. And then by changing q1, when you put q equal to 1 in the limit, you find Gaussian uh, function. And then q can go all the way to 3 because of normalization of the probability. So between 1 and 3, you start to have another large family of possibilities which can be used to give you the correct statistics. So, all right, now uh, this is what uh, uh, I would like to take as a statistical uh, manifestation of weak chaos. And now let me come into uh, my, the models I'm going to use. Basically, they're going to be kind of Fermi Pascal U Ula. And what is TAF, ta, what is T stand for? Eh? Bravo. Mirella didn't say that, you said it. <laughs> okay, by now we know, we know what the T stands for. And now in the well-known fermi pasta type of uh, system that we, we have from 1955, that if we allow the particles to uh, interact with a power alpha, that is going to be the main actor, the main parameter in this uh, talk, talk, in this program, because when alpha is infinity, we should think of nearest neighbor interactions. The only N and M that survive when alpha is infinity is one. So these are the nearest neighbor interactions. But as alpha comes down to zero, we come to the strongest possible interactions between the actors in this drama. Now, uh, because of the double sum, however, that we have to take into account, because now we're going to interact with lots of particles everywhere down the lattice, uh, we must not uh, forget that we have to be fair as far as. Uh... Excuse me, can I ask a question? Yes. So you have this alpha that seems to be unrestricted. It goes to infinity on one side, and it's only restricted by zero on the other. What's the physics that controls alpha? And so it's from nearest interaction. The physics is that every every particle will have an effect and an interaction with many other particles, which are not its nearest neighbors. So its interactions will extend to many, many others. Now, what strength is this extension? Mm -hmm. If alpha is larger than one, of course, then this is a, uh, uh, a function that falls to zero if alpha is greater than one. Uh, one over n minus n. But when alpha re uh, comes to near near one, then we start to enter a regime of very long range interactions. So let's see what happens at that point. Now that would be uh, a little bit difficult to imagine in terms of mechanical uh, experiments. How can you put pendula, they can interact uh, with each other also along a, a different line of springs. And between them, they are pendula, but they can have, uh, one pendula can have interactions with uh, ones that are further away, but the, the best way to think of it is electromagnetic. Electromagnetic interactions 
will be realized with, with far away, far away particles. So we're still on one uh, dimension, and that's where, uh, yeah, it would be much interesting, more interesting to extend this to uh, higher dimensional lattices. But that is quite uh, far from, uh, from now. Now, yes. No, no, yes, yes, yes. From zero to n, and the and it the part the the lattices will be mostly fixed at the two, two points, right? Uh, but we will later on see how to periodically perturb one end of the lattice. That's right. And now we come to the surprise that as long as alpha is uh, close to in FPU infinity, or becomes ten, or becomes five, you see that the increase of the Lyapunov exponents is. Uh, fairly constant to approach a kind of a constant value. And beyond this, below this value of one over here, we begin to see at point 0.8, point 0.6, point 0.4, that the Lyapunov exponents begin to decrease. Now, we know this decrease is not going to go to zero. We're not dealing with a problem with integrable behavior, but they are going to decrease. And this is telling us that something is happening in long range interactions which reduces the chaotic uh, uh, response of the system by having the maximum Lyapunov exponent decrease to, to significantly lower values. So what, what is it now? Is one a, a very uh, well-defined transition point? Well, before we answer this question, let's look at this from a statistics point of view. Here you see that alpha is 0 0.7. So we are in this regime, we will call it long range interactions. It's not precisely from zero to one, but it's, but it's close. You will see that. And you see that now the Gaussian, which is this kind of uh, dashed curve in the center is certainly not the way to uh, describe probabilities of momenta of position variables. Any one of the major variables, once you start to look at its probability densities, you see that they are much better described by another kind of function. And it is the two Gaussian that you see here and which approaches the two Gaussian as the number of particles increase. Now, and uh, uh, from 0 0.7, uh, from Q, it converges finally to a two Gaussian. That is, uh, as time grows, so as time grows, we see here that we approach a, a final Q Gaussian with a specific Q value. Now, if alpha becomes 1.4, so you are a little above alpha, then all the way from alpha 1.4 to infinity, which is the case of, uh, long, of uh, nearest neighbors, you see the same picture. It's all Gaussian and Q is equal to one. And there is no difference all the way from alpha equals 1.4. It's not exactly 1.4, because uh, extensive calculations with, as you see here, lots of numbers of particles, increasing the number of particles, you see that this occurs somewhere above one. So the data based on the numbers of particles we have and the extent of our calculations shows us that, well, there is a transition, but we cannot say if there is a very well-defined transition point. That would be a theoretical question to ask. At this point, we see, however, that from 1.2 or so and all, we have this. It's characteristic that the values of Q have a certain tendency to grow and approach a value close to 5 thirds, I think it is. That can be shown analytically, which occurs at alpha equal to zero. So there is a well-defined behavior of this exponent Q in which uh, whereas short range interactions have a power to extend all the way down to 1.4. So that's how vast the gold the Boltzmann Gibbs regime is, is very vast, but not for uh, nearest neighbor interactions below, uh, close to the, uh, uh, what is it? The Coulomb <laughs> limit one over R and uh, the uh, Newton potential the one over R. Now, now you have to be careful because time enters in a very important way. And you see, if you uh, increase your, your, integra your, your integration, your, your solutions in time, the dynamics can, can grow. 
But whereas you started with a Q that was close to, that's Q minus one, eh? 1.2, Q minus one, then you see that it is unavoidable. At some point in time, Boltzmann-Gibbs is going to prevail. So that is a limit, a thermodynamic limit, where T goes to infinity. But there is another thermodynamic limit when capital M goes to infinity. And which of the two? It turns out that these two limits do not commute. So it's not an ergodic process, as one would say. Exactly. And you will see that, <coughs> you know, when, uh, this period. so what has to be here? There's always a TC, and TC is important for every case that you study. Uh, now, here is what we, I, will, I should say, a little timidly propose as a phase transition diagram that we found several years ago. And uh, it, you have to be very careful when you uh, present uh, a new phase diagram, because you have to explain that here, as you see, this is time. Time in the terms of yeah, some critical time at which this uh, fall towards Gauss starts to occur. But this time I can go take to infinity and I can take all the way to zero. So I can go to thermodynamic limit of time t going to infinity following this line and unavoidably, I have to enter at some point a Q value, which is gives me a, a Thales type of entropy, unavoidably. On the other hand, Boltzmann gives wins. When you take N to go to infinity, you will fall down and then, uh, oh, uh, excuse me, what did I say? Uh, this, uh, by taking T to infinity, Boltzmann gives uh, prevails because we enter the regime of Q1 Gaussians, in other words, the Boltzmann Gibbs regime. However, when N goes to infinity, the limit is not the same. You will have to, at some point, enter a region where the Thales entropy will prevail. And that kind of estimate is shown here. As you see, here is my log logarithm n with n going to infinity. And where is zero? One over log n is becomes zero in that direction. So we start with high values of q and begin to increase to uh, uh, the range or decrease it if we go from point a to alpha two. And you see that these lines, as you go to q, to, to n going to infinity can be described by this empirical formula, which shows you that you can even compute this Q infinity. That this path that I showed going all the way to, to uh, uh, T going to, to zero is in fact, or n going to, to zero to infinity, n going to infinity, there is indeed a limiting value of Q infinity that you will find there. So, we, we see, therefore, that statistically speaking and dynamically speaking, long range interactions establish a certain type of order, makes us understand the thermodynamic limit in a better way. And one might then ask, OK, why do you pay so much attention to the quartic part? How about the quadratic part? Quadratic part offers you, uh, if it is not long, if it is short range, we all know the normal mode formula here. It is a sum of harmonic oscillators. And we even have frequency of linear modes by which we can force the system, as you will see later. And this guy will tell you where to gain big waves of linear modes excited by your, uh, by your uh, sinusoidal force. We'll see that later. So it's a very important uh, starting point for the Fermi Pastorum and others who added then quartic. Uh, interactions. Now, in our generation, our time, we have to contribute something beyond Fermi Past and Ulam and beyond all the many papers that were written about Fermi Past and Ulam under short range interaction. I would like to show you that there's a world of phenomena that you can uh, uh, discover when you introduce the idea of long range interactions. Our potentials have to be normalized, as you see by these values. And the reason is that your energy here depends, is, uh, has, uh, goes to infinity like n. So these ones also must be extensive, must be proportional to n. Therefore, we have to remove this uh, type of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, emphasis 
on uh, on uh, uh, the the number of terms because we we have to uh, include so many particles and we have to uh, compare all these terms on the same footing. So this will happen and they will be all proportional to n extensive from momenta all the way to the potential terms you use. So now you may ask the question, what about alpha uh, range of direction here on the inter, and how about alpha two here? Which one is more important? Is it sufficient for me to put long range of directions on my harmonic oscillations and disregard the cortex put them third past hour? Or is it the other way around? And here is an important result. The quartic terms are more important than interaction because now let us put LRI. It doesn't sound like mine, unfortunately. Uh, let us put LRI on the quartic terms only. So leave your harmonic oscillators as you like them and put your, your uh, long range interactions on uh, LRI. What do you notice? Ah, here is our familiar stabilization picture of the lambdas beginning to decrease. As alpha two, let's look at the lower part of the picture. Here alpha one is infinity, which means what? It means the nearest neighbor interactions are the harmonic terms, right? But, but the unharmonic terms are uh, now have their alpha decreasing all the way to the long range limit. And here is the familiar picture of the Lyapunov exponents decreasing. Okay, now what about LRI only on the quartic term? Is it? Okay, we saw it dynamically by showing you the picture of the Yapo exponent. Let us also see it statistically. Indeed, momentum distributions in this case are going to uh, increase. And as we increase the number of n particles, actually up to eight and two, we see the approach to Q Gaussians whose Q is uh, from one, it goes from 1.17 to 1.25 as the number of particles increases to infinity. So we see the tendency of the system to go to weak chaos due to the quartic interactions having LRI. And this picture gives you the full story. On the left, <clears throat> the linear terms have uh, LRI as you see here, linear LRI on this, on this picture, the C, but the four quartic terms uh, cannot do anything. The, the, uh, uh, the, unless they are also under LRI. If you remain with linear, linear terms, LRI, and then you go to, to mix them together with the uh, nonlinear terms, then you will have to come up with a Chinese uh, PDF. If you see above, the quartic terms don't need that. In this case, alpha one is infinity. So here we have uh, nearest neighbor, but only nonlinear LRI. Uh, and then the same picture happens here. So by themselves, the linear terms cannot do it. You have to involve in the story of long range interactions the quartic terms as well, in order to see the weak chaos. So now we begin to understand a little better the, the importance of different terms in the Hamiltonian. And now, because uh, we have to proceed and, and sometimes I tend to uh, make the picture the story longer than I should, but uh, we have the opportunity to, to discuss it here in more detail. Uh, I would like to show you now a different story. Let us go to a phenomenon, again, one dimensional Hamiltonian lattices, which is very familiar to people. And that is called localized periodic oscillations. Now we have examples of Hamiltonians, the so-called Klein-Gordon Hamiltonian. Notice here the importance of the, lo of the uh, local potentials. These will come later on in this lecture and will play a more important role than you see here. However, at this point, for periodic breathers, we have to introduce uh, local potentials. They are absolutely important. But then. Uh, we have uh, non -linear, we have linear interactions, as you see here, and the sole presence of the uh, local potentials gives you the phenomena I'll show you below. Uh, when I was then in, in Dresden at the time, I have the colleague of uh, Sergei Flach, who was uh, Panagos Maniadis, and we decided to actually change 
this uh, interaction, uh, keep it near the neighbor, we didn't know anything then about LRI, and make it quartic. <laughs> so why should this be different than the, qu the quadratic interaction? It is the local potential terms that play a very important role. And the important role is of trapping at some location a big oscillation. And everywhere else, these oscillations are small. So let us take such a case. You put them in a family of such Hamiltonians. Let us make them longer exit actions, our usual program. Yeah, here. And whatever your W is now, it can be quadratic, it can be quartic, as you said here. And what are we going to study? Our usual N. In fact, here we decided to be very bold, go all the way to alpha equal to zero. Let's go to the case of maximum uh, LRI. Everything, uh, everybody is connected in the same way with everybody else in this network. And of course, we have to make everything extensive. And it's a very, very simple division by n minus one to make all terms at the Hamiltonian uh, of proportional to n. Okay, so that's a fair game. So now this is the object we want to pursue. This is a picture from a general a type of such lattice that exhibits a breather. For those of you who know, there are multi-periodic such entities. One can find uh, double breathers uh, and uh, combinations of them. Uh, however, it all started by one single uh, excitation at one location of the lattice. Uh, and and uh, it was proven that such uh, breathers exist and they are absolutely periodic. Now, what happens to the examples I decided to study in this case? First of all, we had the discrete breathers of the Klein Gordon system, as you see here. Uh, so you start with uh, one excitation in the middle, you let it go, you see that it tries to stay there. There is a solution nearby, a periodic solution, but it's unstable because in time, this wave begins to uh, spread on the lattice. So it's not localized anymore and you lose your breather in the long run, although a kind of oscillation does remain in the center. What about, uh, uh, yes, the one on A on the left is the picture you get from a klein gordon model. The B on the right is the gordon flach with the quartet interaction. Both of them have these breathers. Then look at the picture below. <clears throat> on both these potentials, we decided to add the long range interactions, full long range interaction. And look what happened. All of a sudden, like uh, a, 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 a row of uh, soldiers, uh, who, uh, I mean, oscillating up and down, hand in hand, the people uh, forming a, a chain and supporting an oscillation in the center that is stable, stabilizes the, uh, the breather in both LRI. So there is another stabilizing uh, effect that can be attributed only to the presence of uh, long range interactions. And now uh, let me also uh, show you some other evidence to that effect. You say, okay, fine, you, you told us about breathers in these guys. What about if you look at your Yakunov exponents again? What would you say in these cases? Well, the blue diamonds, what I call them, the blue points are the Yapolov exponents, maximum Yapolov exponent of uh, the ordinary uh, Craig Gordon model, KG, the ordinary uh, Korbach-Lach model. Uh, so you will, oh, what am I doing? Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, sorry, right. And as I said, we're going to look always at the, uh, at the two models, uh, where in this case, uh, we increase the number of particles. Here is the case of increasing the number of particles. Here is increasing the energy. So we increase the energy. You see, the nearest neighbor ones are always above. The Lyapunov exponents in this case are not falling down. Oh, expect, except a little bit, they stabilize in the, in the case of the uh, KG model. However, they are steadily, and from some point on, uh, constantly smaller as the energy increases 
uh, the upper exponents are smaller than the uh, than the ones of the nearest neighbor. And there are even for the nearest neighbor, there are even analytical results. We know it goes like epsilon to the one fourth. A lot of things are known about the nearest neighbor, but nobody knew what's happening in these cases when you add long range interactions. Below, the situation is much more familiar to us because here the number of particles is increasing. And as you see, the number of exponents falls in both cases in this model. So that brought us finally to our last uh, topic in, in this lecture is the phenomenon of supertransmission. I was very amazed when I first heard it. It's a story that goes back to 2003, 2004, to French mathematicians and physicists who uh, presented this analysis on nearest neighbor interactions always, and actually found some analytical results. What happens in this phenomenon? What is this phenomenon of supertransmission? It is what will happen in a lattice. Notice that in this case, I have no on-site potential. Keep this in mind because then I will introduce this guy and things will change. But here, nobody put uh, on-site potential. We have our own uh, normalizing factors as you see, but you start to change the left side of the lattice, so you saw that by an amplitude alpha. Now A, capital A, is your uh, force forcing amplitude. You can increase it or decrease it. What will happen if this omega here is lying in the linear mode band of the lattice, which you also have to be careful what the linear mode uh, uh, region is because you now have the uh, long range formula. If there was no long range here, then we know the, uh, uh, the so-called band of linear modes is from zero to one. But if you add this, now you have to be more careful. What do you want to do with omega, first of all, before A? You, want, you don't want to touch the linear modes because then obviously some of these modes, some of these modes will be excited and some kind of propagation of energy down the lattice will take place. So stay away from the linear modes in a band of frequencies that is called the forbidden band. And in that case, now begin to increase the amplitude of your oscillations. You discover all of a sudden that there is something called a threshold. And there is a sub-threshold for this amplitude. And there is another threshold at, uh, above uh, uh, the, this critical value. And what happens? If you are below this threshold, the amplitude you started with, and you see it here on the left, reaches a certain point close to two, isn't it? The amplitude about two, sends almost no energy down the lattice. Absolutely nothing happens now that you're in the forbidden band. But if you increase a little bit slyer than this uh, value, you see how we start again with a very similar point, only this will go a little closer to two than before. And all of a sudden, there is something which Genier and Leon when they studied it in a PDA, actually, analytically, they found this to correspond to a nonlinear soliton problem, a nonlinear, unstable solution of the problem. Forget the linear ones, we don't touch them, but the nonlinear ones are ex waiting to be excited. At some high critical, this will happen. Now, our question was what does our beautiful long range interaction do to this A critical? Does it affect it in any way? Let me show you actually this. Okay, first of all, the results. Nearest neighbor interactions <clears throat> on this problem uh, as studied in the literature, and we have these analytical results, very few in this topic, tell us that uh, as you, with your alpha going to infinity, alpha two, this is nearest neighbor interactions. The alpha threshold for that particular system is 1.2. Okay. Now let's suppose we change this story by having alpha two go to infinity, but now alpha one increases. And what we find is that uh, we get a low threshold, which is actually higher than 1.2. And the same case, when alpha two is long range, quadratic part, and alpha one goes to uh, 
uh, in, uh, is the nearest neighbor one, again, the same story. Now, suppose you want to do both of them. And not to bore you with many pictures, I just show you the result. Let's let both alpha one go to zero, alpha two go to zero. And you get a number significantly higher and st steadily actually monotonic and it rises all the way to 7.6. So it doesn't stabilize the lattice, of course. It, it has to, uh, some, at some point, have a nonlinear mode excited, but it has it at a much higher threshold than before. Let me, the critical value yeah. is uh, uh, the same for any number of near neighbors considered. And the critical value uh, depends, yeah, yes. A ah, yes. Well, we, uh, yes, that's a good question. In other words, we, are, we deal with about 100 particles. Okay. okay. We see that the results differ uh, a little bit. However, uh, uh, we, uh, it is pos it's expected that this number is, will change for, for longer lattice. But, but in our cases, they, they were in this neighborhood. They are in this neighborhood. So indeed, you have to see. Uh, so uh, now the lattice has become more resilient to your effort to excite it and pass a lot of energy through it because we, we, we propose of the lo uh, long range interactions. Now I come to uh, the end with a, with a surprise. And this is something we are still uh, uh, studying and I don't really see a physical reason for it. Maybe you have some uh, intuition for this to discuss it with me. But the, uh, the, the, the surprise is that we studied a, a system uh, with long range interactions, but now we introduce a, on, on, uh, in the beginning, let's see, let me remember what I said, uh, with on site potential. Notice that everything I told you before had no on site potential in the supra transmission uh, subject. Now I'm going to put this aside. What will it do? Does the on-site potential hold the particles a little more tightly to their position? What does it do? And does not allow them to, uh, this long range effect to uh, spread all over the lattice. Let's find out. Uh, now, Again, we, we keep all terms extension proportional to n. The equations of motion are of this kind. In fact, here I have even a picture of uh, the pendulum. See, there's an experiment. You will see that here the amplitude is actually the torsion um, uh, frequency by which we turn the, uh, the amplitudes. The, uh, so, the pendulum, and you'll see that how the beginning story of a very little energy being transmitted down the lattice will change as my uh, parameter uh, controlling the uh, passes over a very, very distinct value called the critical amplitude. And a big kind of wave will go down the lattice. Even experimentally, in other words, this phenomenon is interesting to observe. Now, how beautiful and nice things were when we were at uh, nearest neighbor cases. At nearest neighbor cases, for alpha equals infinity, we even have an analytical formula of how the critical alpha s depends on omega. Now, uh, this is fine. We have in America also estimated if we can follow very nicely this formula. And you see the phenomenon here. Look at the energy, how high it jumps as a function of omega and alpha. And here is the critical amplitude in, in the horizontal line. So that's fine. What happens now when alpha grows? This is the question we posed. Now, ah, yes, I here uh, show you the result of Genier and Leon, and that was the threshold at which a nonlinear soliton type uh, okay, uh, appeared, but it was unstable, and it appeared at this value. So everything is fine when we speak about Norea's neighbors. If we dare to introduce linear uh, long range interactions, then the formula for the linear modes changes. And that was a result that uh, we also obtained, but other people had also uh, discovered uh, in another paper that we have to uh, avoid the frequency band. The frequency band starts from omega, the linear frequency, and goes a little bit higher than omega, one to than one, one point something like one point five. If you and it depends on the long interaction. 
So we know which band we have to avoid. What do we do therefore? We start with a capital omega from 0.7 to one. So all harmonics, the 0 .7, 0 0.7 times two is 1.4. Our harmonics will also jump over the, the band and give us, uh, and don't, not give us resonances, linear resonances. Everything we will see is non-linear phenomena. So let's do that and see what happens. And let's see here what, what's the story. You see how it is in the beginning. Here, the, your amplitude is less than the critical value. And when the critical value is crossed, then you see the waves, the linear waves that are generated down the lattice. So there is inactivity just before, and this is right after. Look at the values of the critical amplitudes. They are growing. So from alpha equal to 10, as we were far away to the near neighbor limit, alpha infinity, left, we are down to 3.31. Now we are falling. Now we have alpha equal to three, alpha equal to two, can go to alpha equal to zero. And you see that the amplitudes are growing. Remember that 7.6 that the panels asked about as, as a limit. And so it depends. now let us see how I increases as alpha increases. For example, let's look at the case of alpha. This is the alpha infinity limit that you saw in the previous uh, pictures. Now with alpha equal to two, longer range, longer range, this curve begins to grow and will reach all the way up to seven points and so on and so on. And supra transmission for alpha equal to three is indeed uh, lower than it is in amplitude alpha equal to two and so on it goes. Now, alpha S you would expect would continue to grow as alpha goes to zero. But in this case, we put an on-site potential, <coughs> not before, like before. And so this is what happened. So we are staring at this and trying to understand how come there is a, a threshold, which is not exact because you change the parameters of the problem a little bit, this shifts to two, uh, uh, close to two, but in the case of uh, uh, very uh, long range interaction, this is alpha, right? So the, the way we go towards blue circles and red circles, we are going towards the case alpha equal to zero. And you see that the threshold of uh, uh, the super transmission phenomenon falls down all of a sudden to zero. That is what we are studying now. And we are finding that uh, we can uh, we can take the uh, on-site potential terms to zero, and then we will see that this phenomenon will disappear, but we don't understand why. How can you explain the fact that the no, uh, on-site potentials, in other words, your own story in your own family, if you were an entity in this network, your, your local dependence on your own dynamics begins to break something in, uh, in the case of the long range interactions, as long as the, uh, the range goes down below two and starts to reach uh, towards zero. Then the uh, on-site potential uh, terms are taking uh, a more important role than we thought they, they played. So this is a very interesting problem uh, that is still under investigation. So to make the long story short, I uh, took you down the path of all these uh, uh, papers we have written in the last few years. And uh, I think it was important to appreciate that there is something called weak chaos, even from a statistical point of view. And it happens when we allow our uh, uh, interactions to become longer and longer range. At the same time, however, dynamically, the maximum Lyapunov exponent plays a very important role and starts to decrease when uh, n uh, in, in a Hamiltonian lattice and goes to infinity and the dynamics becomes more stable. The same thing happens with the uh, Klein-Gordon and for, uh, Gorbachev flash lattices. And in the supra transmission, as you saw, we found under LRI significantly higher threshold uh, required for citations. However, the question of the on-site potential are, are still open. Why does uh, it happen that uh, our critical amplitudes take a dive, have a maximum and fall to zero. So thank you very much for uh, your attention.
It is uh, a pleasure to be here. We start the year. Okay. Hopefully, uh, understandable talk. Okay. Everybody Let's got the message here. <laughs> that I wanted uh, to convey. How to, uh, again, here we have the, yeah, so that we can see everybody who is attending. This and work is can... actually, yeah, based on several other years of work with Heis Corpus, I think is online. Uh, he, he is there, yeah. Heis and I, with our uh, students and colleagues, eh, Eleni, so we uh, had studied this phenomena. And in our book, uh, when was it? Uh, Hi. Uh, no, sometime. Don't I don't have it here. Uh -huh. Ah, Bunsen's Cocos. Okay. Yeah, we had a, a book on uh, uh, the fundamentals of uh, uh, what we called yeah, uh, weak chaos and, and strong chaos. A lot of the results and our work was based on that. So, time for questions. So, we'll okay. Uh, I'm not it. Yes, no, but it is. Can we, talk, can we go to figure two? Because I'm not yeah. in the field, but I'm talking about that. Let's go back. Yeah. Let's go out. We'll get out. Take this. Okay. So. No, let's let's remove. Let's go back. How do we go back? Uh, and let's choose. Uh, here's, the yeah, back. here's the back. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We we'll go back. Go back to the beginning, huh? Yeah, I just want to figure it out. I want to come. Huh? Say transparent. So. Uh, 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 why no exit? No, don't, don't have an exit. Mm. Ah, okay, so that's better. Right, thank you. Let's go to the beginning. Okay. Figure two. Figure two. Figure two, whatever that is. Here. Ah, no. But so, so what I want to ask you is probably known in, in the field or. Here, here it says the moment you have a, a strong cows, you go to, to, to the Boltzmann Gibbs statistics. Yes. And the weak cows is these other this Charlie statistics. This is a very important issue. Is this proven? Is this something that we we, we simply calculate and see, or is this a theorem behind? So another way of putting it, behind the thermo, the thermodynamic statistical physics point of view of the Boltzmann Gibbs statistics. Mm -hmm. Are you telling yes. me that the chaos theory yes. actually has a way of quantifying yes. when we go to this Boltzmann Gibbs right. and the weak one, when we go to the other one? Right. Uh, in, it's a very good question because it does certainly what I showed you does not concern this type of phenomena in uh, all systems, only in one dimensional Hamiltonian lattice. This is, this is very important result yeah. if it's generally true. Yes. It turns it out. It brings an entire tool of that's chaos right. theory that's right. That's right. into thermodynamics. Yeah. Yeah, least, this has already happened because the uh, theory of all this by Charles and has been uh, uh, applied with this type of di distributions and two Gaussians and so on to biology, to, to phenomena, experiments at CERN, to any uh, to uh, uh, growth in organisms in, in uh, uh, biological systems. It, it is incredible to how many uh, different types of problems uh, this uh, theory has applied. Now, why is it not really a theory like Boltzmann Gibbs? because we don't have thermodynamics here. We cannot write a free energy. We can write, write a, uh, uh, the, the potential, the free, fun, the free energy. Yeah, yes, you understand. The, the, the temperature, good. how can the temperature be defined? It's hidden in beta. Yes, there could yeah. be a very, very important contribution of hiding here. That's why I wanted to ask. Yes. If this was to be generalized in not in one D lattices, Yes, you actually but show it, that the strong chaos yeah. is the <clears throat> transition to the what we call the thermal equilibrium, Absolutely, right? Yeah. Which enforces the BG statistics. This is a, this is a golden theorem if, yes. to be explored if it's there. Ah. Rather than this could be interesting yes. exploration in the perimeter. Yes. Show okay, maybe that's what's it is, that. yes. There could be a general it story. Has all, right, right. See, there is a story, and there is going on for, for many, many years, and books have been written about it. Uh, a turnstile in this story occurred 
when a central limit theorem was proved for these systems, because nobody knew. It's all based on central limit theorem. But we know central limit theorem for ordinary uh, exponentially falling interactions. Boltzmann Gibbs has given it to us. It's the Gaussian comes out as a result of a central limit theorem. Finally, Tzalis and, and mathematicians, uh, Umarov and uh, Russian mathematicians, uh, proved that there is a central limit theorem for long range interactions. And it has been actually, this Q has been, uh, 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 le has led to different types of uh, such important quantities, uh, scaling relations, the dependence on alpha, a, a lot of theory has been done in this. But as you say, it is a whole uh, field of people think of it as a, as a revolution in statistical mechanics. And many people have been probing Chalice and his friends to actually prove it mathematically in a, in a, in a real system. And it turns out, for example, that uh, if you take the um, uh, period doubling bifurcation, you must have further bifurcation to chaos. Right? From period one, we go to period two, Feigenbaum, universal. Yes, well, I'm not that ah, ah, okay. <laughs> go, we, uh, right? In any case, let me told you, tell you this way. From a series of period doubling bifurcations, you arrive at a phenomenon where there is a sudden transition to chaos. And this is on all the books about this nonlinear dynamics. And that is the famous Feigenbaum point, right? You know, at which this happened. Now, beyond this transition is chaos in the Gaussian way. Now stay there on that, on a one dimensional mapping, a very simple problem, and you Gaussian arises at that, at that transition. Now which is chaos before it is fully blown. It has just appeared. It's, it's linked with some of the anomalies that truly put my attention yes. on this. Anyway, yeah. I, I don't want to want sure. to for my sure. But for as an answer, my criticism is about our, so to speak, uh, how to say, uh, reservation is still there. There is no thermodynamics. We have not been able to. Uh, find relations where you can find out the uh, conductivity constants. You can prove this just as you do for both my gifts here. We haven't done this yet. So we cannot call this thermodynamics. I call it thermostatistics. Yes. Is this theory related with kappa distribution? Yes. There yes. Something? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely right. Yeah. This is a class. That's right. It's a very wide class of examples which fall under this theory. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Yes, my uh, The first question is, uh, uh, the, uh, the transitions that will wake and stone chaos if you, ha you have uh, computed uh, in some cases the Konogorov entropy. You have seen the changes uh, computing the Konogorov entropy because I guess maybe you have some change of the phase space geometry. In some cases, you cannot compare because, for example, Hamiltonian systems with three degrees of freedom you have the sticky phenomena. And uh, on the right, on a stable manifold of unstable periodic moments, uh, we find the right after home bifurcation. Yes. But also, in some cases, with three or more degrees of freedom, we have also other phenomena, like most bifurcations, like Mackay. For example, had some similar cases in chemical reaction dynamics. And uh, uh, Mackay has a paper about the most bifurcation, but have topological bifurcations in the phase space. And uh, I, I don't know if you don't know the other Lyapunov exponents, if you compare all these results. Uh, because if I see to the maximum exponent. Yes, 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 that's uh, the maximum. Uh, uh, what, what I can tell you is that, no, no. First of all, let's not generalize this about you know, everything. Uh, that is not true. Uh, let me say that every time there is a very specified, well-defined transition from ordinary to chaotic behavior. That transition point, it's not in this one system we look for uh, chaos here, chaos there in the same system. We look now at a family of system, which depends on some parameter. As I vary the parameter, the behavior of the system begins to become more uh, complex. And you reach a point where there is a global bifurcation. Now, as I told you previously, we're local, local bifurcation, local, yeah. local, local. Then we reach a global bifurcation. At this point is where you will find this type of statistics. A little beyond this. So you have to give me uh, not, a, not a local bifurcation, not something that happened locally in some system. You have to give me a phenomenon that happens suddenly at some, when a parameter crosses a certain value. And so then I would uh, uh, be able to 
to tell you. There are, there are many examples, uh, say chemistry or, or, or the point of uh, transition, to the boiling point, uh, something that, uh, well, uh, we all know what it is, the boiling point and what, how, how we go uh, from water to steam, something is classical uh, thermodynamics, uh, but, and we take averages, we can compute averages, we can do so many things with Boltzmann Gibbs thermodynamics. Thales offers a new kind of thermostatistics. He has tried very hard to make it thermodynamics by trying to, to find an analogs of all this. What is, now, now we know have an entropy, okay, but entropy is not enough. You need a partition function. You need a partition, you have to sum over all possibilities e to the minus i e over kt, right? This is how we can divide by the partition function, z. You have to do all of this and it is not uniquely done, known how to do that. We're still, we're still in this, in this right? but it has offered a, a good model to use in many, many situations. I think the mathematical structures, the only the applications aside, being yes. very, very important. Yes. I think some bright mind should go there and prove the mathematics because it may be a very big rabbit is hiding there. Yeah. In the transition, if Carlos plays a role in actually establishing thermal equilibrium, this is humo of humongous, I think, to my humble opinion, yeah. humongous importance. Yes. Yeah. What puzzles me is the following. <laughs> if we think about weak chaos as a stick in a situation, right. let's say, Right. And time is very important. So we may have a, a, a weak chaos situation, but if we wait long enough, yes. then we, we go to a strong chaos situation. Yes. Uh, I have in this case. Yes. I, okay. You tempt me. Chaos I had a surprise for Panos. Okay, I had a surprise okay. for Panos. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> I know he would like that. That's why I. Uh, I will go down towards the end and show you something that is very recent and the paper is now being written. You see, here is a case that you will like. This is a four-dimensional map. Now, you, you generate your four-dimensional maps by taking a three-degree freedom system and you go down and look at uh, surface of section and then you say, oh, I have a four-dimensional map here. Well, I started with a two-dimensional map, only this, as you see. And with Charles and uh, uh, another colleague, we published a paper about two Gaussians for two-dimensional chaos mm -hmm. in this map. Now, this map is integrable. If you study this case, it's completely integrable. And when K1 is bigger than one, there is a sudden point of chaos making you to study at the center. And now we made it more integrable, and now we added coupling. For the first time, I have seen chaos, Charles chaos, in a four-dimensional world. Now, things are more important. So you see, what happens here? Why is it interesting? You, you will all appreciate that thing. And Mirella and Matos, they, you know about these things. It can be, now that I am in four dimensions, my point can be hyperbolic and elliptic at the same time. Okay. Right? Because I have two parameters. I can keep kappa 2 less than 1, so it is elliptic in this direction, and k1 greater than 1, so I have a And that's what you also call, I think, in your papers, the HE, hyperbolic elliptic. You've seen such situations. The other one is hyperbolic, hyperbolic. And both of them are stable. And you see that uh, it doesn't make sense to make it elliptic, hyperbolic, because they're very similar. So this, whatever happens for, in one case will happen in the other. So this is a situation. It has a lot of symmetry, a lot of behavior. And now I'll just show you some uh, projections. Ah. From here. Yeah. So now you see, I will plot two dimensional plots. And uh, this is what uh, here uh, fools you a little bit because you're tempted to think it's two dimensional. It looks like two dimensional, but it's not. Uh, epsilon is small. So we have not yet changed parameters to make things uh, uh, more general. What are the axes? The axes are projections xn, xn plus one. It is identical, it's almost the same with yn to yn plus one. Because these are two, this is a projection. Now this is moving in four dimensions. And it is you know, intersecting xn to xn plus one, something that reminds us of the two dimensional case. You see that it's evident here. When kappa two is very small, goes to zero. Then this is just the, the well-known saddle point here. Now, you don't want to make this point elliptic. <laughs> these are elliptic points. 
because then there's nothing to study. But you can look at your saddles. You, have, you may have a saddle a, a, anywhere else. In a, in a four uh, period problem, period two, period four, period, a higher period. So you go to a saddle, I say, and con concentrate on that, this type of chaos. Now you would think this chaos is more confined. This is more extended. This is even more extended. And that appears to be the case uh, if one looks at uh, the, the uh, you see, this figures. Now here we have a Q of 1.8, which means close to Q equal to two. So we are far from Talis is one, Talis is one. And you see the complicated case here. So just to show you, this is not a function of a parameter now. We go beyond this idea. We say that it's not a function of parameter, it's a function of, uh, well, in a sense, it does depend on parameters, but it must be, depend on the topological aspects of chaos. Uh, this is more complicated than this. And this chaos actually occurs at high values. Both of them are hyperbolic here. And a similar picture arises in the YM plane. You look at the YM projection, it looks a little like this. So yeah, I ask you now, is this uh, Charlie's chaos or Boltzmann chaos? And the answer is, it's Boltzmann chaos. Q is close to one. So what you see and you expect, you actually can now uh, somehow support it by some statistical yeah. evidence here. But as I said, yeah, this is the beginning. Let's see our friends that uh, want to ask questions from my group. We can try to see again here, I think, uh, who had raised their hand, Minos. Uh, I think Minos was. But it's not anymore there. Oh, no, he's here. Minos, you want right. to? Yeah, let's go ahead. Ask somebody. Minos, are you still there? Yeah. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Because the connection is not uh, perfect. Okay, uh, but we hear you. <laughs> uh, okay, um, you calculated uh, the, you computed the Lyapunov of exponents as you increase uh, alpha, uh, as you increase long range um, interaction, and you found that the Lyapunov of exponent, the prime, the largest one, goes down. Does it increase? So obviously. This means that your uh, Kolmogorov Sinai, Sinai entropy, which is the sum of the uh, yes. positive Lyapunov yes. exponents, Correct. also goes down. Correct. Uh, one question. Uh, you said that um, in that in the limit of alpha going to infinity, uh, you have a residual uh, Chalice uh, entropy or something. We have. Yes or no? Or no. Uh, you, I forgot you have which chaos, which you identify with the uh, nearest uh, neighbor case. No. With the thermostatics of Thales. Yeah. Uh, no, the nearest uh, neighbor case. I just wanted well, to make yeah, it well, sound. Uh, uh, everything above alpha equal to 1.2, 1.5, all yeah. the way to infinity is Thales. Uh, sorry, okay. Boltzmann Gibbs. Everything that. Uh, okay. Ah, okay. okay. One clarification. One clarification. By Boltzmann Gibbs, you mean molecular chaos? By Boltzmann Gibbs, I mean the statistics of uh, hard yes. Yeah, so uh, for Gaussian, Gau uh, the Boltzmann Gibbs entropy. But, but, uh, you have yes. a system yes. that's thermodynamical, stable, and it is, uh, yeah. Uh, it's like a hard uh, right. sphere, right. Well, we, a we, gas we, of we, hard spheres. Right. For that, you can define your favorite. Uh, uh, partition function, you can find your internal energy, U, free energy. You can all do this provided your alpha is bigger than 1.2 over there and you're in the regime. Okay. Uh, who expected that? You know, we, we thought that uh, nearest neighbor. Yes, you have only, uh, uh, just one more question. Yeah. One more question. Sure. Um, if I take the, your system and uh, steer it, uh, steer it and study the effect of uh, call it mixing, call it whatever uh, perturbation. How fast it relaxes to some sort of a stationary state, uh, equilibrium time. Uh, the characteristic yeah. time scale of this increases, uh, uh, obviously, yeah. with the long range interaction, isn't it? Time, yes, yeah. You see, that's why I showed the fact it that it takes longer and longer yes, yes, to reach exactly, equilibrium. Exactly. That's why we looked at two kinds of limits. Thermodynamic limit as t goes to infinity and as n goes to infinity, and they okay, thank you. yeah, and they lead you to different types of of distribution. 
So okay, thank you. Thanks. Right. Yes. When n goes to infinity, you have everything expects this. At any goes to infinity, yes. number of degrees of freedom. This is thermodynamics, uh, and it's uh, glory in all its glory. But when the time goes to infinity, it's no longer that. There is another yeah. type of thermodynamics. Uh, so uh, yes. ergo, ergo, ergodicity gets enhanced. Uh, I mean, uh, you reach ergodicity uh, faster, or you you may never reach ergodicity by no, making no, I, I, interaction. I, I, no. I, I, yeah, by ergodicity, you mean what? E equating the time thermal, averages? Thermal averages with. with the uh, no, no. Ensemble no, average. We don't, we don't know these things. This is real thermodynamics. This is uh, to really do, okay. to have this, yeah, you must know how to define uh, your. Uh, uh, my answer when you show oh. is that it's non commutable the time. And yes, yes, which yes. Means they were non that's yes. why all these things are probably the perimeter, I think, of the issue. Yes. Right? Because not settled thermodynamics, there will be probably non ergodic processes yes. behind it. Yes. And it, sample averages will not yeah. be time averages. Right. And in a way, it shows you why, why, why physics is, is more complex and why complexity has become such an important issue to call it a complexity science. Because uh, uh, we know what happens at limits. When you have hard sphere gas and the limits of uh, the ideal gas, yes, we know what happens in the ideal gas case. Every student knows it from first year. Uh, but then you introduce complexity in your system. Even in normal how, how can you do that? By means, we say, of changing the range of interactions. This is, this is further than that, because even in non-ideal gas, you can actually put- Thank you, thank you. Out. Yes. You yeah. can find an equation of state using thermodynamics, using the Viria theorem, without having to do so this machinery, and actually find a new equation of state that is not the ideal gas, by putting long range forces with a certain, uh, with a certain approximation, it's possible. I think the, more, the bigger promise I would see here is that you could actually prove some things which in classical thermodynamics have been unproven if you link them for chaos. But you told me there is a, quite a few things standing in the way of that, you know, some definitions which cannot happen mm. in this approach, the partition function of it. But I think it's interesting to prove all this because this is a very big contribution, theoretical contribution yeah. lying there. See, that's where real life is. I mean, you know, ideals we teach. Simple, I mean, you take a uh, Heisenberg and uh, uh, sure, sure, there's a question, and you so you tell the student that this is all linear, and uh, as soon as you go beyond the harmonic oscillator, and you try to make a potential v of x a non-linear potential in one dimension, all of a sudden you get amazing phenomena. Yeah, but no and, more well, are allowed. That's right. Yeah, that's well, I know what it is when the worlds go to infinity, but once you have a a, 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 a how we, do we call it a, a, a Finite. Well, finite well, well, finite well, we get a uh, phenomena of uh, where the wave function is escapes from uh, yeah, what tunnel, you get tunnel in phenomena. So, indeed, we know very, very few things about uh, systems with many degrees of freedom. Oh, yeah, that is the point. That, and even a system with low numbers of degrees of freedom, the things that you're studying here, you know, you have shown also in your papers how uh, chaos can be local somewhere. But what kind of local? If it is uh, uh, chalice, it will be sticky. It will stay there. Uh, because in our systems that we show you, there were times when we, look, we, we moved away from the real. The, the two Gaussian is no longer you know, the best. Gauss is closed by. So here we are, we're going to say shapes which are more uh, complicated. Some of them go to infinity, then you lose it. Then you have. Uh, but as long as, as chaos is, is weak, then you can keep it trapped here as it is. Yeah. And you see it. it behaves like order. Weak yeah. chaos behaves like order. Weak chaos Someone has. Someone cannot. Enhances see local is. densities if you want. And that's, that's an important right. conclusion. Okay. Okay. Thank you okay. very much we for your you uh, patience. <laughs> thank you for coming. Uh, you will get an announcement for the next seminar. Uh, which will be in the coming weeks, and maybe not next week, but uh, you will get our announcement. So thank you very much. We stop it here. We proceed with uh, the.
Βασιλόπιτα. 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 